hopefully there's some continuity of approach and story between sales and marketing as well. So I think it starts with a firm understanding of who you're trying to target. It starts with an understanding of who those personas are within the companies you're trying to sell to. And then coordinating the right plays. I mean, in account-based marketing, you hear a lot of people talk about plays. Well, plays has, you know, has a value inside and outside of any kind of an account-based marketing effort. I think of that as just coordinating the efforts between sales and marketing with some consistency of message, some consistency of progression that shows the prospect that they're on a single path towards success. Welcome to the Schweiki Media Expert webinar series where we team up with leading marketing and publishing experts to provide you with tips and best practices to help you grow your business and stay on the cutting edge. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. I'm here today with Matt Hines Mark. And Matt is a prolific author and nationally recognized award winning blogger. He is president and founder of Heinz Marketing with 15 years of marketing business development and sales experience from a variety of organizations and industries. He is a dynamic speaker, memorable not only for his keen insight and humor, but his actionable and motivating takeaways. Matt's career focuses on consistently delivering measurable results with greater sales, revenue growth, product success, and customer loyalty. Matt is a repeat winner of the top 50 most influential people in sales lead management and top 50 sales and marketing influencers. And today we are going to talk about how to increase results by integrating content and marketing automation strategies. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm great, man. Thanks very much for having me. I'm glad to have you back here. Always fun to see what's inside that head of yours. And I know <laughs> uh, content and uh, I know content marketing is near and dear to your heart. And we all know that um, tying in some of the greatest tools out there are very helpful. Mm -hmm. So I uh, would love to uh, see what you got to say today. Very, very excited. Yeah, yeah. I think that so, you know, we're, we've definitely right. seen content increase in importance for B2B marketers, uh, but I think that what's happened is as we've seen budgets increase and spend increase and content proliferate, uh, we are not seeing a commensurate tie between that content and business results. So I think what's happening is we're getting a lot more crappy blog posts that make people feel good about clicks and, and maybe web traffic, but isn't as actively translating into business value. So great to see that we're seeing more results, but um, you know, definitely hoping to tie that more closely to business results moving forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's just the ongoing goal here. You know, I mean, as you know, when the content marketing first kicked off, it's like this works like magic, and then it was like, hey, you got to give it three months, and then it's like you got to give it six months, you got to give it twelve months. But I think that's just happening with all, all marketing out there. All avenues are getting crowded. You know, everything yeah. is just increasing. So it's just a matter of um, you know, and you're hearing a lot more about you know, taking eighty percent of your time up front and then executing, you know, the other part. So but yeah, I mean it's it, but it's tough. It's tough for everybody out there. So, you know, let let's see how we can best utilize everything. But real quick, just for people who might not understand this, can you explain real quick what, what marketing automation is? Oh boy. Uh, I think you ask ten people you're gonna have ten different answers. I mean for me, yeah, I, I look at marketing automation as the means of creating consistency and repeatability of certain actions that help connect the right content to the right prospect at the right time. Uh it is not set okay. it and forget it. Uh I think you know, good technology someone once described to me, you know, good marketing and sales technology is automating something that robots can do just as well, if not better and more efficiently, you know? So if, if a prospect uh, it does a certain activity, if there's a right follow-up uh, message, if there's a right follow-up action that is consistent for every time a prospect does that activity, then a robot should be able to do that for you, right? Robots are not going to replace the human touch. They're not gonna replace your salespeople for complex selling, but they should be able to automate if this, then that from a content and from a sequence and from a, from a marketing uh, out outcome perspective. Yeah, no, I think you described it very well. And, and what we're here to talk about is to do it where a robot does not look like it's doing it, right? And, it, and it's yeah. almost operating in a way that if a salesperson was actually doing it, this is what they would literally send them next, right? So, yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the trick here. You know, um, a lot of these tools come out and early adopters reap the benefits, people catch up. Now you got to go to the next level of thinking. So I think that's where we are with automation. But I think you, you explained it very well. So as we're getting going here, um, 
what what are the first things you need to ask yourself or know about your audience, your potential customers, before you start to set up any marketing automation initiatives, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. And, you know, we find far too many companies will buy tools and then wonder what to do with them. Uh, I think strategy always has to come first. Technology is never your strategy. Technology is the enabler and accelerator of your strategy. So I think before you start, you got to first know what success looks like. You know, what metrics are we working towards? It's usually a sales number or a revenue number um, that the business cares about that may be different than your operational marketing requirements. But, you know, you, went, you mentioned earlier, you know, helping robots do things that don't make it look like robots are doing things. And key to that is understanding who am I talking to? Who are these personas that I care about? What are the issues they care about? And if someone's at a different, at differing stages of their buying journey, what's the message, what's the content, what's the approach that's going to most engage with them? You know, before you can sell to someone, you have to have their attention. Uh, and so what are you doing to get their attention, to keep their attention, to earn their attention? Forget technology for a minute. Forget marketing automation. Forget that these tools exist. If you had one customer to sell to, what's the way you would engage with them? Like, you can't call them up and ask them if they'd like to see a demo. So what's, imp what's important to them right now that's going to get them to pay attention to you, that get them to read a subject line and then read the first line of your email? It's probably not message about messages about you. It's probably messages about them. It's about their needs, their challenges, their concerns, what they're trying to accomplish this month, this quarter, this year. And so if you were to address that content, and if you know then, okay, like this person, I've got their attention, and they've shown interest in this particular topic. Well, what else can you share relative to that kind of a topic? Like if you were to send another email to them because they've shown interest in topic A, what are four more ways of engaging on topic A that might still be valuable to someone to extend the depth of insight you're providing to someone based on that topic? And again, like if think about that one person in front of you you're having that conversation with, but now assume that there's 100 people in your industry that have that role at different companies you'd like to sell to. How are you going to have that conversation with 100 different people, with 1,000 different people? And then how are you going to know when maybe 37 of them show interest in subject matter A tomorrow? So that the next day you want to put more insight in uh, different areas of subject A, matter A, in front of them. That's how you sort of scale this idea of I'm having this one-to-one -one conversation into something that is scalable, repeatable, that marketing automation can really help with. Understood. So who, who do you, in your opinion, should be involved in um, this initial setup? This well, and you know, I think that, you know, if, if you're going to do persona work, I think product marketing is a good place to start. In many cases, your product marketing team may already have a sense of personas. Um, you know, you got to make sure that those personas aren't developed for the product alone. Uh, far too often our personas, in, you know, in companies, especially we see in B2B, they're about product usage and feature usage, not about, you know, taste, drift the product away and what are these people trying to accomplish? What are their challenges? Who else do they engage with within their internal buying committee? And what are they, what's the connective tissue between those people? What do they have in common? Where is there, is there tension or conflict or disagreement about objectives? So understanding what that looks like is one thing. And then, and then thinking about, I think it's, it's an interesting exercise to step back and say, okay, we're, we, have one, we have one prospect. Between sales and marketing, how do we sell to that person? Like, you know, what, what, what should marketing send them? What should marketing put in front of them? When should sales engage? And then how should sales engage? Does sales engage whenever they feel like it? Do they engage when the customer exhibits some kind of behavior or some kind of buying signal? And hopefully it's not a thanks for downloading the white paper. Would you like to see a demo? Hopefully there's some continuity of approach and story between sales and marketing as well. So I think it starts with a firm understanding of who you're trying to target. It starts with an understanding of who those personas are within the companies you're trying to sell to. And then coordinating the right plays. I mean, in account-based marketing, you hear a lot of people talk about plays. Well, plays has, you know, has a value inside and outside of any kind of an account-based marketing effort. I think of that as just coordinating the efforts between sales and marketing with some consistency of message, some consistency of progression that shows the prospect that they're on a single path towards success. Okay. So, yeah, it sounds like you definitely need sales and marketing working together, which is what you're hearing just ad nauseum these days, you know, because Absolutely. I think that there has been a disconnect in the past, and now everyone's like, hey, let's be friends here and work together because you really need input from all areas here. You know, sales aren't necessarily going to know that. Now, they could definitely help with the persona building, um, but they might not be thinking that way, and marketing definitely right. needs to be thinking that way, but then you need to get their input. So you, you mentioned, you know, so you get everything set up, but – now, as we're getting going here, just generally, what sorts of content 
do you feel like you need to have ready to utilize with these plans? You know, not necessarily like this, uh, blog about this or that, but just overriding overall types of content. Uh, have you experienced that? You know, you normally need to kind of have in mind as you're going to be building out these programs. Yeah, I find that most companies are pretty good at having what we call bottom of funnel content, which is information about your product or service. Once someone has mm -hmm. bought off on the need for something, they want to learn more about what you actually do. Like that's almost the easy part. What a lot of companies don't have very good is what we call top of funnel content, which is, you know, uh, things that get, uh, you know, in the in the CEB parlance, how are you challenging their status quo, right? How are you getting someone to think differently about a problem that they may or may not know that they have? Um, how are you using content not to get someone to convert and buy, but simply to get and keep their attention, to change the way they think about a problem? Um, you know, to educate them and show that you have expertise around a particular area, which, is, you know, studies show if you have expertise in an area, people assume you have a product behind that that can fulfill, uh, you know, some, you know, some challenges in that area as well. So I think the, the, the some of the most important content for organizations to develop is that really precise, persona-driven, value-added content that educates, that drives, that, that that challenges those prospects, that that helps them rethink a status quo, which changes the way they think about what their priorities are uh, around a particular problem or challenge or opportunity. Because uh, if the, if you know if the challenge if the status quo stays in place, um, no matter how awesome your product is, they're going to continue to follow the path that they're on right now. You have to get them to change their priorities based on their own outcomes, based on what they need in order to move forward. And doing that usually is it means creating content around their problems, around their needs, around their situation. You know, another way to say that is, you know, people don't care about your story until you care about theirs. And so that's, and I think mm -hmm. that sometimes that takes some patience and some discipline to build that foundation of need, but that leads to better conversion rates. It leads to more dedicated, committed prospects. It leads to, better yield on that marketing and sales activity over time. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing you're, you're definitely, you know, a lot of, seems like a lot of backloaded with content and you need to make sure you need to front that content, meaning front of the buying cycle, which yes. is the awareness stage of their problems, helping solve their issues. So you're going to most likely really need to be thinking. And again, that, that will stem directly from the persona build and, and, and you know, not what people care about, what the pains are, what the problems are. And that's where you're most likely going to be spending a ton of your content uh, efforts, uh, at that upfront stage to get them going. And then once they read a lot of that or show indications that they have or done that, then you start serving up potentially down the front, down the road, you know, comparisons and or product information. Yep. Okay. All right. Now here, now we're going to get into, uh, you know, this is where we're really going to draw your expertise. This is, you know, this is the stuff here, but I would love to have you share your advice on how you've seen some of the best examples of how companies utilize content with their automations. You can almost try to paint a picture of a scenario that where you have done for yourself or for another company that you have said, man, this, you know, if I could write a Wikipedia definition of tying in content marketing, this is the flow or this is, I know it's kind of a tough question because there's probably a thousand answers different scenarios, but if you could do your best to kind of paint a picture for us, I would appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different ways to do it, and some of them, you know, aren't specifically tied to marketing automation. I, I think there's a lot of companies that have developed, I mean, you know, for, you know, for better or worse, you know, some of the best examples of really customized, successful marketing automation are those companies that have developed numerous follow-up strings, right, like based on different prospect situations. Um, you know, some of the best marketing automation implementations have dozens of different follow-up uh, campaigns set up that apply to different needs, different triggers from your prospects, right? So unfortunately, you know, one of the answers is, you know, there's a level of complexity that exists that actually makes that work well. Um, you know, you, I think there's a point of diminishing returns on some of that segmentation where, pro, you know, where particular problems that people respond to may not be enough to sort of, to really sort of loosen the status quo enough to get someone to commit to change. Um, but I think you can still, uh, the, the more you can segment those campaigns, the better off you're going to be. 
Uh, I'm also a big fan of omni-channel segmentation. And so when I think about automating the content, it's not just about the email string. You know, companies like Demandbase and others can change the experience you have on the web page. You know, they can sniff who you are and where you're coming from almost instantly and load a different experience for you on, the ho on their home page based on did, were you there before, what were you looking at. They can customize what content is put in front of you, what messages are put in front of you based on what you've done before, what industry you're in. So that level of customization can happen there as well. And then, you know, we're, we're getting to the point where you can now orchestrate that effort across every channel, right? I mean, there's tools like Integrate and others that will allow you to take, you know, what you're doing across multiple digital channels and even take the work you're doing in offline um, and coordinate those efforts so that what you previously could only do with, you know, drip email campaigns, you can now do across social, across digital, across tactile marketing, uh, customizing your website, uh, uh, et cetera. Well, explain so, that you know, across these... digital. Could explain that across digital. I, <clears throat> I think it would make sense to most people what you're saying about the website. Again, that high level uh, opportunity needs to be there, meaning lots of traffic, lots of big sales. You know, obviously, if you're a smaller website that doesn't get that much traffic, that would be overkill. Uh, and you couldn't afford it anyways, but uh, it also would make sense, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from a budget standpoint. Yeah. But so, but so the customizing, you know, based on user activity by behavior, that's really high level stuff um, that you should definitely consider. But explain to me what what you mean, and, and then in, and Matt, I am going to want to circle back to maybe some simple starter examples <laughs> as well for companies just getting going. But let's stick with this for this second. So, wh what do you mean by being able to do that? Uh, across other digital channels as far as customization. Can you can you explain that a little bit further? Yeah. Well, I mean, so think of it, it's, it's similar to what you can do with, you know, email. Like if you notice that someone is paying particular attention to a certain type of content, your drip campaign can be associated with that kind of content. And it used to be that you could only, you know, through a marketing automation system, you can just do that in email. There are now tools that will let you take that same campaign, that same drip content, and now feature that in front of prospects across the web. You can feature that on, on, from a native advertising standpoint. Um, so, you know, I think it's the same strategy. It's the same content in many cases. You're just not relying on a single channel to get it out there. Um, and when, and, it, and, it's, and I think this important opportunity to sort of expand what we think about is marketing automation. I think a lot of people think of marketing automation as like a Marketo or a HubSpot or a Pardot, something that is mostly email-based. Well, there's a lot of other tools out there. For example, there's a tool called Socito that basically does uh, intent-based automated marketing uh, tied to social media channels. So if you start to see some intent, uh, in, intent uh, messages, some buying signals on Twitter, for example, so CETA will highlight those, um, you know, help score the leads that you have and can put those leads into an automated follow-up sequence that puts related content in front of that prospect. Either it could be done in email, it could be Socially. done over the phone, it could be done through, you know, through the same channel. But sometimes automation isn't just about pushing out content, something that's also automating the discovery of content, the discovery of those buying signals and that intent data across multiple channels that previously have been sort of unleveraged and unmined. Gotcha. So again, just to kind of recap here, and I'm glad you brought, you've gone down this path because <clears throat> I was thinking, mainly about email with this. But now the, it's more of looking at marketing automation as a concept versus uh, an email automation tool. And the concept of it is, is again, the whole concept behind it is serving, you know, beginning stage content, starting to identify activity, meaning, hey, they're interested in this. Okay, give them some more, give them some more, give them some more. And then they graduate from the awareness stage, let's say. And then we want to start showing them more consideration type of content. And then once they've scored out of that, then you can then you can ask for the demo, ask for the call setup or whatever. But now we're looking at omni-channel, you know, taking this across multiple channels and applying that same thought, that same methodology behind this because that I think has proven to be one of marketers difficult tactics is how do you serve the right content? Uh, market automation is very linear. You get it. You can do it. It makes sense. You know, you can build the program and then you're done. Socially finding those signals out and doing that has been more of a challenge, but, um, and, and I mean, is it, am I barking up the right tree here? I mean, is that kind of how, you, how, how you've seen it happen as well and what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, you got it. Um, and, and I think, so I think that, you know, the, 
Like, I mean, you can, you can, if you haven't been doing a lot of this, and you mentioned like getting back to some simple ways for people to start. I mean, if, if you haven't been doing this, it can feel intimidating to have all these different channels and all yes. these different potential campaigns going. Oh, it, it, absolutely. And I guarantee you, the people that are doing that, those that was not sort of a binary, we're doing nothing and now we're doing all these things. These build over time. And the point I make here is not that to give, to make it seem complicated, but actually to demonstrate that there are lots of ways to approach this. I know a lot of companies that mm -hmm. don't have sophisticated, like don't have the dozens of lead follow-up campaigns set up in their marketing automation system, but they're using Sosido or they're using intent-based tools, right? Or they're identifying companies um, that they think meet a certain criteria based on some intent signals that come from the company and putting those companies into online digital campaigns where people with the right title inside those companies are seeing your messages across the web through remnant advertising, uh, through platforms like Terminus and Demandbase and AdRoll and others. So there's lots of ways to get started on this. Um, a very simple thing you can do today is go to a site called First Rain, F-I-R-S-T-R-A-I-N. First Rain, you can tell it to look for an industry or a category or a specific set of companies and tell it what information you want to hear about. Uh, for example, if you are selling a technology platform into the retail industry, maybe you want to find out every time someone mentions omni-channel uh, in a retail uh, environment. Uh, First Rain can send you an email every morning showing you every single time that gets mentioned by Macy's in a financial disclosure or by um, Abercrombie and Fitch, you know, in in uh, in their earnings report, right? And so they're basically uh, looking for places where they're saying, oh, you know, we're adding X new stores, or we're investing in our omni-channel strategy to improve the tie between online and retail. That may be a buying signal for you, right? And your next step may be to have a salesperson call that person up with a value-added offer to say, hey, you know, congrats on your earnings yesterday. So that you've got this new initiative. Do you have a tech stack in place? I mean, you can have a pretty basic conversation, but you're automating the capture of the intent. You're automating the capture of the signals every morning that can give you the fodder to have those conversations. So from my, as far as I'm concerned, that's marketing automation. Anytime you are automating an activity oh, makes sense. That, that used to have yeah. to be done by people or interns and now can be done by robots, you're making yourself more efficient. And, and almost by definition, you are also giving yourself advantage over others that aren't using that tool or don't have that insight um, and it may have the insight, but aren't following up with it to capitalize on it. Understood. Yeah, a kind of a, a morph uh, between automation slash making sure we're serving up the right stuff. Um, something we're doing here is we're we're basically tagging content on site by stage. And you know, just like you create a custom audience, you know, on Facebook or for Twitter or for LinkedIn, or whatever, on your website to gather, you know, hey, these are people who are coming to our web website now let's retarget to them well now you're breaking those into you're tagging whatever pages are awareness consideration or buying pages then you're scoring them that way and then you can set it up when they graduate to then start seeing other other ads as well okay. um, so that that's kind of like a, a morph way to kind of to do this from automating the people who are coming to your site you know there's obviously some manual intervention here but as there will be with setting up most of all of this stuff but that's another <clears throat> way you can go about, you know, automating the sense of finding out where people are going through, uh, where they are in this, their, you know, the best of your ability on the buying stage and then serving them up the next. Yeah, and, and I would argue that, you know, in some but, cases, uh, the more you, in some cases, the more you automate, you know, the less likely you are able to make those human adjustments as necessary, right? I mean, if you're trying to automate mm -hmm. every part of the process, if you're trying to say, well, I've got a tool that finds the buying signal and that triggers this, you know, digital ad. The digital ad triggers what happens in email. Like you might have really uh, good copy that makes it sound like it was written by a person. But, you know, how much is that deal worth to you? I mean, if we're talking about mid-market enterprise size deals, like do you really want robots doing the entire sales process for you? Or are you worried that, as you should be, that you're leaving something on the table that that human interaction, that human personalization can make a huge difference in accelerating awareness and accelerating trust and credibility and momentum of the deal. Um, so I, I, I don't think you can automate the whole process. And I think it's important to consider the human element as part of that automated process, but insert that human element more efficiently uh, and more intelligently based on those insights that you're seeing that the robots are identifying and capturing for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. As, and I know you're a big proponent of this, but yeah, part of the marketing automation point is to tell the salespeople, hey, this is a point where you might want to reach out to this and contact, right? Yeah. And then yeah. they need to go in and look at the – and personalize their first outreach or whatever to it. So that's a great point you bring up. Yeah, you're not just going to set it – very, very few businesses can set it, forget it, and then sales are just going to happen. It, you're going to you're going to build it. You're going to set it. It's going to get to a certain point, and then that's where the salesperson – you're almost never going to be able to do away with that for 99.9% .9 of businesses. Um, so it's quite – yeah, I mean everybody needs to keep paying attention to that. You're not going to just automate, automate, automate. You're going to automate to get to the point where – you just put your, your staff and your, your sales team in a better position to make a sale. Um, now, let's, uh, let, let's break down a simple email automation for somebody to set up. Just uh, uh, go back to the beginning when you first learned. I think we talked about some mid to high level stuff. We also talked about you know, some s simple ways as far as the automation of discovering people who are looking for certain things out there. But let, let's, let's have you just explain a real simple – Automate email automation uh, tie-in with content marketing and how that might work. Really basic, really simple first step for a beginner here. All right, so let's say someone uh, comes to your website and downloads a white paper, right? Uh, just okay. because someone downloaded a white paper doesn't mean they're necessarily qualified nor are they ready to buy. And this, you know, I'll use this example straight from our own business. You know, we've got a variety of white papers on our on our site. You know, content marketing, marketing automation, inside sales management, a bunch of different stuff. Someone comes and downloads one of those white papers. Uh, our marketing automation system captures that, notes, notes that, and triggers a follow-up program, in many cases, tied to that content. So we figure if you're interested in our content marketing best practice guide, you might also be interested in hearing what we have to say about video marketing. You might be interested in our, our podcast that talks a lot about content marketing. So we are not yet ready to sell you, but we want to see if you show interest in other uh, pieces of content that we have that are related to that first piece of content. Um, and and then the marketing automation system is watching to see if people engage with that content or not. If they don't, uh, they may continue to get drift content until they engage with something or not. If they do, and they show even more interest in a particular topic, then that does one of a couple things. First, they're getting scored in that marketing automation system, such that once someone reaches a certain score threshold, that alerts a salesperson that maybe they should follow up. Also, if they exhibit a score tied to a particular type of content, then we may put actual sort of a paid offer in front of them. So, you know, we have a variety of on-demand workshops uh, available for purchase. One of them is a five-hour content marketing workshop with a 50-page 50 50 workbook with frameworks and tools and templates and the whole deal. So we might put that in front of someone uh, if they've shown increased interest in additional sort of content learning, content best practices. Uh, so, I mean, you think about it just sort of like as a progression, think about it almost sort of like a reverse uh, funnel, right? I mean, you are, um, you know, you're focused in, on, on, on in, you know, a group of individuals first who have shown a minor level of interest. Um, you're then filtering based on those that have shown more and putting other offers in front of them. And then eventually determining if you've got someone that you want to talk to or not. But I think you can, you know, that's a basic progression just based on an initial set of, of inquiries that might be coming to your website. Okay. Now, uh, what's your take? I mean, do you drip these people forever? Or are these normally four to eight week campaigns, and then you maybe drop them into your monthly email list, or are they forever? Or what, what have you? What do you suggest there? Well, you know, I, I don't. Well, I mean, there's a lot of ways to think about that. I think the, I like putting people on a drip campaign that lasts for, you know, uh, that goes out every couple weeks, you know, for at least two or three months. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they show increased interest in those in some of that content, you can increase the frequency or change the nature of what you're putting in front of someone. Mm -hmm. But I do think those those drip, if if they don't engage on that at all, the drip has to end, and then you kind of put them back in the pool. Um, and I think you know a lot of the the challenge with a lot of lead scoring methodologies is there isn't regressive scoring, right? You people earn points, but then people lose points by drifting off into not paying attention anymore. And that happens with all of us, right? Like we all, mm -hmm. we, we, we gotta, we gotta be in our bonnet about a particular topic. And then all of a sudden next week we got a new fire drill, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and that's natural. And that's why this is a sales funnel and not a sales cylinder. Like you're gonna lose prospects, but it's important to not assume that a little bit of action three months ago indicates someone is still a hot prospect today. In fact, the opposite needs to happen. Um, you know, you have to be able to sort of, you know, sort of move people back into a more passive state if they're not showing engagement. 
Yeah, no, I hear you. And I think one point to be made is the um, what level of consideration this is. You know, if you're um, like a law firm that's dealing with an, an employment law discrimination type of deal, right? And you have a white paper of, hey, everything you need to do if you feel like you've been wrongfully terminated. And then, you know, white paper with that. That decision is probably going to be made within the next couple of weeks. You know, mm -hmm. it's probably something. So you might want to do a quicker drip, you know, through, you know, over a shorter period of time. For somebody like you, um, yeah, space it out a little bit more because you're obviously a high consideration choice. You know, you don't just go with the run of the mill marketing. You know, I mean, it's it's a big decision, long commitment, right? So yeah, so but um, that's something to to be considered. You know, when you mentioned two weeks, but it could be could be longer, it could be shorter. But thanks for describing that. I think you. Uh, I, I think you really painted a nice picture of how that works. Now, I've also seen you in the past talk about tying in marketing automation with like Google AdWords campaigns. What, what what's your experience there? And and are we talking about like regular SEM campaigns for sales that may not convert, or are we talking about white paper offering or both? Or what what do you what do, what did you mean by that when you when you were talking about that? Yeah, I mean I think you have to be a little careful with paid search. I think you know not every industry, especially in B two B, you know, it does paid search work. Um, but I think you know it, it is. It, and when I think about paid paid search, I tend to think about paid you know sort of like you know. PPC, uh, PPC media that can be applied by on paid search as well as paid social, right? And your ability to, to, to target on paid social is typically better than paid search. Um, but then I think, you know, the same rules apply. Like, I mean, you, you can be getting downloads from search, from social, from, you know, inbound SEO traffic, from email campaigns. Um, but ultimately, you're trying to identify people that have exhibited certain needs. Um, you know, I think, you know, your opportunity to put, to not just ask for people on search or not just look for people on search who are searching for your solution, but look for people that are searching for a particular problem, searching for examples or descriptions of a pain point. Like that's a buying signal. That's an intent based signal as well. So if you see those people, you know, what offer you can you put in front of them that is lightweight, that just gets their engagement, that may not be downloading a demo, but maybe getting engaged in a white paper or getting a sort of a tip sheet on how to execute something, something very easy. Don't give them a 12 point download page, give them a single, you know, get it for an email address. So you've got a, a way of, 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 of engaging with them and starting to measure and track and score the activity that they exhibit for you moving forward. Okay, gotcha. So if you are going to be doing it, look, that's great advice. So you look for searches and optimize, which, by the way, are probably going to be low, low cost clicks. You yeah. know, if you're looking for those uh, question type of optimization uh, for SEM, pay per click, Google, these are all the ads at the top and the bottom there. So, but do that and then, but your idea is basically to put that white paper in front of them and then kick them into that. Okay. And it's not, it's not okay, understood. Thank you for that. Now let, let's circle back around to like the types of content because that's obviously a source of uh, anxiety for companies just getting started here. You know, you okay? Well, this sounds great. This sounds amazing. Okay, I want to be helpful. I want to be educational. Uh, you know, but uh, shoot, that seems like a lot, lot to do. But I, I think uh, I've also uh, heard you speak on that. There's probably a lot of great content that that companies have already produced that can be very useful for marketing automation programs. And I think I've even seen you talk about like the 11 sources of marketing automation content that you've already written. Can, can you uh, go down and list what those are? Yeah. I mean, I think you know, a lot of people worry about creating content. It's, it's, you know, you have content already, I guarantee you. Like, you know, if you have done any level of documentation of answering customer questions, you have content. If your executives have done any presentations in at conferences, you have content. Um, you know, you know, I, I hate, I would, uh, I would hesitate to tell people they should use their PR efforts as content because a lot of PR efforts are, uh, tend to be fairly self-serving and more about the company than about the customer. Um, but you have that content as well. I think if you have customers, you have the ability to crowdsource content, ask your customers a question, take their feedback and curate that into content. Um, the next time you're at an industry event, take a camera with you and ask people questions, like kind of do a, do a, you know, feed on the street kind of a piece and, and, uh, and create content. I mean, it's, it, and, I, and increasingly now I even see people just creating 50 words of a smart message and a question that engages in a conversation. 
Um, I think too often we think content is 800 word blog posts, right? And that may help with search and that's all fine and good. And that may be sort of your bread and butter in some cases, but you know, do a 30 second video, do a 50 word question on LinkedIn. I mean, your content can take a variety of different formats and I guarantee you have subject matter experts throughout your business that can help you create that content as well. All right. Very cool. Uh, what about afterwards? You know, let's say you created a great automation, you know, program and it worked and you sold somebody like, wow, awesome, right? Well, I, I don't believe you feel like that's the finish line. You know, you, you could possibly have some post-sale automations. Do you have any creative ideas you've seen people do that you can share here? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're and you're absolutely right, you know, especially if you're a, a, a recurring revenue business or a, a software as a service business. Once you close the deal, uh, you have not made any money, right? I mean, all the money needs to be made is you keep that customer for as long as possible. So the end of the sales funnel is really what we think of as the middle of the sales bow tie. You know, you've gotten someone to sign. Now let's keep them engaged. Um, and so, you know, your, your, your automation at that point might be tied uh, to things they're doing or not doing with your product. If you see that people aren't using key features, that could trigger a campaign that sort of demystifies those features, make sure people knows how to use it, make sure they Great have, have, see how well other people are benefiting from it. Um, there's a variety of tools, including Mixpanel. There's a new company called Apuri, uh, A-P-P-U-R-I, uh, that are looking at your data to identify which prospects or which, mean, which customers are at risk, which customers need help. And that might trigger everything from, uh, you know, a, an automated communication sequence uh, to help get them back on track. It might trigger and prioritize the customer service calls or account manager calls that should be made. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, you know, if, if you know which features and which activities lead to greater satisfaction and greater loyalty, you know, part of your automation is keeping people engaged with those features. Part of your automation is finding those that aren't engaged to save them before it's too late. Okay. Yeah, I mean, those are some great great ideas. Um, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff here. What did, why do you see that some of these things fail? Because this all sounds like amazing, right? Like, oh my God, this if I move forward with this, it's all going to work out amazingly. But why why did they, why you know aren't these foolproof? Where where do you see people make the most mistakes that lead to failure here? Well, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I think some of the primary reasons these fail are. You know what people put too much product centric content into the follow up uh, just because someone downloaded a white paper doesn't mean they're interested in your product right away. I think companies move too quickly to a product conversation and a product pitch when customers aren't ready for that. Um, I also think that people don't produce enough content and too often people build, uh, you know, they go and buy some marketing automation platforms or buy these intent based tools and don't have any direction behind them, right? And there isn't any instruction or direction or, or coaching to sales teams on, okay, like here's this intent data. Hey, look, I just found four companies that are talking about needing to invest in omni-channel marketing and retail. Um, what do you, like, go call them, right? And so like just, just telling someone to go call them does not help. Uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't create consistency and real value that increases your conversion rate. So, you know, not being prepared, not having enough content and having too much product-centric content are some of the biggest uh, culprits that we've seen. Or just understanding, you know, hey, you know, these scores mean this, right? I yep. went through that with our sales team. I was like, here, let me, let me, people need to understand the why, right? You know, and then they're like, oh, okay, I'll do it now, right? And so, yeah, just understand like, hey, when these high scores, this means people are clicking on this and this and this and like 25 other things, you know, so they obviously are engaged. So just starting there and just having full uh, having everybody understand it that I know that sounds like a super simple, you know, like logical thing, but from my experience, you still need to have that talk with people and you need to let them understand like what, you know, this is a lot of money and a lot of time we're investing here. Understand like how cool this is, like understand yep. how warm these people might be. And then obviously as a salesperson, well, would you like to call them cold leads or warm leads, right? Even lukewarm or way better than cold. So, okay. That's, that's awesome. Now along that same line of thought, I was reading um, something when I was preparing for this, and I, and I saw you mention that uh, you said a lot of uh, users of marketing automation, they're not making full use of the lead nurturing features. Uh, which of those features do you see that people aren't utilizing? Because that could also possibly be a point of failure. Well, all of them. I mean, <laughs> it, I, no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I mean, I think that still to this day, the vast majority of people that have marketing automation platforms are using them for batches and emails and landing pages. 
So they're not uh, still a lot of companies really aren't effectively using so the drip the drip campaigns feature. Uh, and those that are uh, tend to have more of a one size fits all mentality. And so, uh, you know, I think there's a re put it another way. There's a reason why 90 percent of content created by marketing doesn't work. It's because it doesn't apply to that situation. You have to your ability now with technology and with our ability to segment our customers is to create more custom paths and more custom content for different customer situations, different personas at different stages of the buying journey based on showing interest in different content or different needs. And so, uh, you know, I, I realize that takes time. It takes time and effort uh, to, to build out multiple sequences. Uh, but, you know, one size fits all. Just it, it waters everything down and it doesn't work. Okay. You're the, probably the 20th expert I've spoken to in a row that is saying slow down, think it through from the very beginning, and at, by the end of the month or year or whatever, you will have worked way faster. So right. you're just repeating what everybody says. In my mind, I am envisioning a uh, diagram from hell, <laughs> you know, as far as all the different, you know, little limbs and, you know, tributaries that you need to go through. But if you think it through and you do it right, it'll be worth that time spent. And you're yep. really not talking about weeks and weeks of having to think this through. I mean, you can't knock it out, um, but you just got to, you know, draw it out and then and then have your person familiar with these programs build it out for you. But yep. I, I think you're really making some strong points that uh, are that I've been hearing a ton of, and I think people need to slow down, get it right, think it through, and then do it, do it, uh, and then implement. So, how do you see this evolving over the next few years? Do you see uh, anything changing or on the horizon, in your opinion? Well, I, I think that our ability to manage all these channels together is going to improve. I mean, the, the opportunity exists. I mentioned sort of this, this opportunity across multiple digital channels and then offline. It exists, but the ability to orchestrate that in one place is still out of out of reach for many companies. I mean, there are companies like Integrate and others that are that are working on that today and making great strides. But I think I think we'll see a lot more companies take advantage of that. Um, you know, honestly, I think that some of the advances we're going to see aren't going to be specific to the technology and more around the approach the companies take. Uh, I'm seeing more companies better integrate sales and marketing efforts. So this, you know, and on both sides, things can be automated, but on both sides, things need to be made more customer centric. Uh, your customer needs to hear a single unified coherent message between from sales and marketing, not one mark message from marketing and another marketing message from sales. So I think, you know, the systems that we see that can integrate those communication patterns together, uh, already we're seeing programs from, you know, companies like um, Engageo, you know, that are building platforms for both sales and marketing teams. We're seeing some of the traditional marketing automation platforms, such as Acton, uh, build out uh, sales automation tools that allow sales teams to interact directly within marketing campaigns under one purview. So you have one dashboard of what everything's working, uh, what's happening and what's working. So I think that sort of that more unified view and unified approach to the customer and to the message and story that the customer gets is is somewhere that is a it's a big opportunity and we're seeing more companies move in that direction. Now, is there one platform or one service out there that ties in you know traditional automation, which is marketing automation via email, to the social channels, or do you need like the uh, Sucido tie-in to do that? Yeah, I mean, today it's still, you know, and today you really kind of need multiple channels. Um, you know, Sucido is a great example where they tie directly into Marketo. They have a seamless integration, not only of leads, but also those buying signals that can trigger and trigger scoring of certain leads based on those buying signals that can then alert salespeople for follow-up and tell them how to follow up. So we're seeing some of that today, but I think that's definitely in its, in its infancy. Um, and uh, we need to see a lot more of that across more of the social channels. By infancy, you probably mean next week we'll see it. <laughs> probably, the way, yeah. The way, the way marketing goes. This stuff right? moves pretty fast. It does, but it's exciting stuff, though. Yeah. It really, if if you've now gotten the concept of all this, and you're a marketer, you're starting to realize, I get it. You know, what what's marketing? It's about putting the right message in front of the right person at the right time. And now we are seeing opportunities to do that um, across all these different channels now. Right. And that's exciting. 
I mean, it's – and now you just – but again, start from the very beginning. Make sure you know who that right person is and make sure you know what that right message is, and, and then uh, these other uh, tools will help you deliver it at the right time. So, um, yeah, awesome. Uh, any uh, parting thoughts before I um, unfortunately have to let you go? Yeah, you know, I think – for anyone that's listening that's intimidated by all the stuff we're talking about, uh, you're not alone, um, and uh, this is there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of moving parts. If there's one unifying theme here, it is customer centricity. None of your marketing automation is going to work unless it's relevant to your customer. Just because you can automate something doesn't mean people are going to pay attention to it. Uh, so really think about who that target is. What do they care about? When you hear a buying signal, what does that signal really mean? and think about the next step you need to take with that prospect. You can't move people from step A to step D all at once. Sometimes it, sometimes three steps is in fact faster than one. So think about what it's really gonna take to get that prospect engaged, but come up with a plan that is customer centric based on their needs first to build the foundation of trust and credibility that'll get them engaged and converted down the road. Well put, Matt, very well put. How can uh, people continue to learn from you and pick up even more great tidbits? Oh man! Well, I appreciate everyone listening and still stick around for this whole uh, this whole uh, uh, podcast. You know, you can find me online at HeinzMarketing.com, H-E-I-N-Z Marketing.com. Just on Twitter at, at Heinz Marketing. Email is Matt M-A-T-T at Heinz Marketing.com. All right, awesome, Matt. Uh, well, have a good one, and uh, until next time. Absolutely. All right. Bye bye.